There you have it, Lord and Lady Cheever. The Baltimore estate is yours if you want it. Its grounds are vast and beautiful, suitable for Sunday picnics as well as relaxing croquet-based tournaments. It has an ample wine cellar with several oaken casks of Baltimore family whiskey. It also contains a unique and terrifying family history filled with heroism, tragedy, and ancient curses. Now, if you'll follow me to the kitchen... I... I beg your pardon, Mr. Phillips? What was that family history you mentioned? Yes, curses and tragedy, something or other. Of course, how silly of me. As with any estate as old as Baltimore Hall, you will find that its past is coloured with many intriguing rumours, as well as quite a few verifiable atrocities. Now, our kitchen staff comes with the property, you may- Now hold on a minute, Mr. Phillips. My wife and I are very interested in purchasing Baltimore Hall, in its grounds, its casks, and its highly trained kitchen staff but I make it a point to know what I'm getting into. I don't want to get stuck with an uninhabitable ramshackle. Our last place was like that. We had spiders constantly, and the groundskeeper had this milky eye. Very well. If you are buying the property, you should know the storied past behind it. Baltimore Hall was built brick by brick by Sir Hollis Baltimore in 1672 as a wedding present for his Irish bride, Amelia. The two lived in the castle until Amelia was taken with fever. Sir Baltimore's diaries suggest that the cries of an old crone heralded the death of his young bride. Shortly after that, Lord Baltimore became dour and cruel. The darkness in Sir Baltimore grew to such a degree that it attracted the attention of the local village. The townspeople lay siege to the hall and found an emaciated Sir Baltimore hovering over the remains of his dead bride and before the village minister plunged a silver dagger into Lord Baltimore's crazed heart, he uttered these words, Sanguis set vita, blood is life. Since that fateful day, the stories of Baltimore Hall have faded with the townspeople who tell them. But some say, on a full moon you can still hear the faint cries of a young woman, and see the brutish form coated in blood, tearing through the countryside in search of her. I... I don't know what to say. Ghastly business. Indeed. Yeah, that's what you get when you marry the Irish, am I right? I I beg your pardon? They are such a backward people, aren't they? Inscrutable race. All except for that witty Mr. Oscar Wilde. I do say he's probably the lady killer. I rather enjoy him, don't you? I think you both missed the point of the story. I... I do hope he finds the right woman someday. Such a handsome man shouldn't go bachelor too long. Don't you agree, Mr. Phillips? <sighs> I suppose, milady. Jolly good. We'll take it. Blood-soaked Irish curses and all. Very good, sir. (laughs) 